For many college athletes, going pro is just a dream. Even for the talented ones, few will ever make it to draft day. Instead, for all of their hard work on the field, they get the promise of a free education. But more and more, it's becoming clear that in many cases, their degrees are worthless. Mike McAdoo chose to play football for the University of North Carolina, not just for its winning record, but for its academic reputation. They wasn't even talking football, they was talking academics. So they were saying, you know what, we can't promise your son that he's going to go to the NFL, but one thing we can't promise him is he will get a you know, college degree. And that didn't happen. It did not. Soon, he says, he found himself pushed into so-called paper classes, where athletes were getting easy A's in courses they never actually attended. To be honest, I think the NCAA is, you know, it's kind of crooked. When the academic corruption was exposed, the NCAA decided not to punish UNC. Instead, it went after athletes like McAdoo, who lost his spot on the team, eventually dropping out. The individual players were singled out, literally thrown under the bus, in my opinion, by the way the enforcement process works. Bob Orr is McAdoo's attorney. And I think the university hoped, and the NCAA was compliant with the sense of, okay, we've punished the players, let's move on. What did the NCAA miss? They go after players and they miss a bigger problem at UNC, is that what you're saying? I don't know that they missed it. I think they ignored it. Is it correct? California Congressman Tony Cardenas wants to know if that's true. He's writing a letter to the NCAA asking why the organization is not taking a closer look at what he describes as academic fraud at UNC. We have way too many examples where people were not investigated, where universities were not investigated, and you have people who admit that they are either illiterate or they didn't get an education while they were performing at a, a wonderful pace on the field, on the court. Cardenas' questions are not just potentially embarrassing to the NCAA, they could have a big impact because if the NCAA has to admit that athletes at UNC or at any school aren't getting an education, then what are they getting? And is that a win for those who say that college athletes need to be paid? The umbilical cord between the student and the athlete is being slowly cut. And if it's cut, it's, I think has very serious consequences for the NCAA. That's Tom McMillan, the former athlete turned congressman who now sits on the University of Maryland Board of Regents. Athletes are not given education. They step out of the university and they may have a degree, but they don't have an education. And that's the sad thing about it. A 2012 internal report done by UNC found this. Despite what one might imagine, there is no evidence the counselors or the students or the coaches had anything to do with perpetrating this abuse. Here's the university's athletic chairwoman last September. So I don't think there's a student on this campus that doesn't look for some easy classes to balance out their schedule. But McAdoo says it was university athletic counselors that put him in those paper classes. Do you feel like the, the paper class system was forced on you? It was. You know, the whole the whole thing, it was like, you know, the university knew what was going on and they knew I was taking paper classes and they kind of like, you know, kind of swept it under the rug. Whistleblower Mary Willingham, a former reading specialist at UNC who worked with student athletes, backs him up. We just talked about them as paper classes. We just talked about them out loud. It wasn't a secret. In response, the university system announced it hired another independent investigator to take another look. But the NCAA is still not investigating UNC. Instead, this year, it will consider redefining what role, if any, it will have in policing academic fraud. Sarah Ganim, CNN, Washington.